From the News Talk STL studios in St. Louis, it's The Right Mind Show with Todd Showalter. On tonight's episode, author Richard Amito on Trump's altruism, Todd's real-life hairstylist Sarah H., and The Right Mind studio band Mitch Murphy and the Murphy Tones. Now, putting the fun in your dysfunctional world, here's your host, Todd Showalter. Wow, pretty bold of old Cam's Kamala Harris. Uh, did you see that she was talking to old Brett Bear on Fox the other day? I saw the headline, Kamala attacked by Bear. Oh my <laughs> goodness, that's no <laughs> clickbait if I have ever heard it, but I like it. Attacked by Bear. Yeah, I can't believe she actually went on Fox. I it, mean, that was, it, that was kind of out of her element where everybody takes care of her. I mean, but they, they went and they had to, and she, what? How do you think she did? Because because, you know, as usual, she didn't answer the questions as she should have because she doesn't know, know what the answers are. But uh, do you think that was pretty bold of her? Mm-hmm. I have very strong opinions about this because of that 25-minute long interview. Yeah. I saw the highlights in a two-minute version on YouTube, so yeah. I'm fully ready to give you my opinions on this interview. And it seemed like uh, they were fighting the entire time. Oh, yes. Super contentious. That's what they call it, contentious. She did this great trick where if you talk kind of slow, yes. someone will try and interrupt you to, to help you. So um, I'm going to do a little imitation of her. Please do, and I'll be Sean Connery. Okay. Now, about the immigration, something that I've thought about is... Uh, sure, you Ty, can you let me finish? Can you just let me finish? <laughs> uh, My goodness. That is what she does. She's a little snippy. I and, am a woman, and you don't interrupt a lady. She, exactly. I mean, can you imagine? Here's the thing, my friend. I mean, I there are a lot of things that are going into this election, but I just, you know, in the worst-case scenario, I don't know what that would be. Well, if she were actually to somehow win, and I don't think it would be fair, but would, can you imagine having to listen to her voice? For four years, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Mm -hmm. Well, they say that she's on drugs a lot. And that's why she giggles and she's trying to legalize all the marijuana. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't get drug tested at the White House. They probably do random drug tests over there. Mm -hmm. Got to make her pee in a cup. And she's like, "Ah, I'm going to legalize that tomorrow. So let's hold off on this. Well, you know, like Nancy Pelosi with all the... Nancy. Nancy. (laughs) Nancy. Hello, Nancy. (laughs) Well. I still haven't seen that movie. (laughs) I'm trying to get Dennis Quaid on the show, by the way. I was going to tell about that from the Reagan movie. This has nothing to do with what we were talking about, but you just took me in another direction and I'm trying to get him on the show. Now he has not responded, but I did talk to his people and his people have not talked to my people. So we don't know if that's going to happen. But back to you, Nancy Pelosi. Okay. She was the inside person on all these stocks, you know? So anything that apparently if people watch what she invest in, she has all the inside information. So you should follow what Nancy's doing. The Nancy Pelosi index, they that's call it. what it is. Invest you know. in what she's got going well, maybe on. that's what cams is doing with her weed maybe she's like so vested in dope and weed that she's going to invest in these cannabis places and maybe that's the whole point of it maybe that's why she wants to legalize it on a federal basis so that she can become the next nancy pelosi wouldn't everybody want to be nancy pelosi well i don't but wouldn't you how can we get rich off this scheme should we start planting little marijuana seeds in our backyards no, and then there'll be a money tree no i just giggle we'll just giggle the whole rest of the show <laughs> <laughs> I just fell out of a coconut tree, so that's oh. why I'm very, very giggly right now. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Have you tried Google lately? I am so flamuxed Here's what I do. I have a cartoon that I'm working on, okay? And all of my cartoons are based on facts. None of them are made up, okay? If I have to do something statistical, I always got to Google. And so I was doing something based on the inflation rates. Now, get this, and I invite everybody to try it at home. I was putting in, what is the inflation rate today versus 2019, okay? Just Google that. That's what I did. And you know what it came back and said? It says the inflation rate today is 2.4%, which is lower than 1.8% in 2019. Now, I, I was not the best in math. That's why I married a math teacher. Okay, but isn't 24 higher than one8 Mm, I didn't do good in math. I know, I know. I was in the North County Hazelwood School District in Missouri, so. Yeah, but you know, you did fine there, too. I think they put that bus, was it your bus or somebody else's bus? It's outside, what is it, the the theater or or the bathroom or something like that? Or is it even a bus at all? Maybe it was just something that somebody stole. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, the Colin Firth, he went to Hazelwood West, my school, for a little bit, and he had that stutter in King's Speech, so that's probably because of the Hazelwood School District. Yeah, And then Randy Orton, professional wrestler from the W. 
WWF, he went to Hazelwood Central, right. and he just grew up taking chair shots to the head. So right. that's what the Hazelwood School District does. So I don't do public math anymore. But we can't trust Google to be a calculator no. either. But, yeah, enough of Colin Firth. I mean, even he would d- 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 study in the King speech. That, mm-hmm. was, that was a good movie, by the way. Did you see that movie? Yeah, I was working at the movie theater when that came out. So right. I was making a lot of popcorn scoops in that time frame. Black Swan and King's speech. That was what it was all about when I was in the theater business. Well, the movie, the, the fun, I don't know if you realize that. I mean, we're really digress- digressing here because that's what we do on our show. But, you know, that, that whole entire movie was only like 10 minutes, but it was a, in the theater it was two, like two hours and a half, two and a half hours because everything, he was doing his lines and the lines would just take so long that it made the movie two and a half hours. And that's how he won the Academy Award. It seems like all of these tech companies are trying to build AI into their regular search engine. Like it used to work, I guess, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And now AI is just getting stuff wrong as it's trying to learn. I was asking Alexa yesterday, I said, who died today? Because I knew that One Direction boy died. Liam yes, Payne. he did. He fell off of a balcony because he was he? he was doing drugs in Argentina or something. Yeah, so I just wanted cams. Maybe Kamala. Maybe he was doing uh, bong hits with Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. And so I was going to see what Alexa was going to tell me about this death. And I said, who died today? And it said, Sean P. Diddy Combs died today. I was like, really? <laughs> oh, Sean P. I don't know if he knows about that or if he just changed his name again. Like, oh, well, this P. Diddy name's got a bad stink on it. I'm going to oh. change it to... Sean Connery sure. Combs or something. So you think you're a, so you think you're a soccer player, Mr. Diddy? <laughs> something like Mr. I, Diddy. Mr. Diddy. Yeah, you know, I tell you what, I, I mean, I, I talk about that's that's foreshadowing, I think, because I mean, they say he's going to be like the next Epstein or something. He's just going to mysteriously be gone. And uh, by the way, Epstein did not, you know, kill himself. So P. Diddy, is that his name? P. Diddy, if something happens to him, I don't think he killed himself either. Or if he did, he drowned on baby oil. Yeah, terrible. Oh, it's so slickery in those prisons when baby oil gets all over the concrete, oh, slip, that and then is not good. accidentally hang yourself with a bed sheet. Don't want to bend over. If you did bend over, you could probably steal one of my signs. Guess what happened to me? Did I tell you about that? I did tell you. This has the- been a theme, actually. Oh. A yard sign controversies I, with this election. I, I cannot believe it. I have four signs. Well, now I have three. Actually, I got the other four taken care of. But four signs in front of my yard because I'm a patriot, dang it. I have my Trump sign. I have my Trump freedom sign. I have my uh, no on three. And then I also have my wonderful vote Todd. Seriously, can he do any worse? You know, for my votetodd.org site right there. One of these signs, one of these signs was mysteriously taken in the middle of the night and i know when because of my ring <laughs> at ten forty-five, it was taken guess which one of these signs was taken well i mean no one would take the no sign because it clearly says no it says don't do it yeah so right. i mean i don't know the one that you worked the hardest on probably the one that uh, cost you the most amount of money that one that hurts your heart that right, it's gone right yeah the vote Todd one. You're exactly. Did you steal it? I would not. I mean, I, I, mean, I said I would have given it to you. I mean, if you came over to my house and stole it, I'm really going to be upset because I have about 3,000 of them in my <laughs> trunk. I could have just given them to you. Of all the signs to steal, they stole my vote Todd sign. And immediately I just put another one out there to say, ha ha, look, you think you got me, but you didn't. Why would they steal my sign? Well, I thought when we were trying to sleuth this one out earlier that it was a crazy weather event and the wind took it. But you said this was caught on ring. Do you have, like, sneaky prowler human shadows on this video? I'll tell you how. This is how precise and how trustworthy my ring is. (laughs) At 1045, you see the sign. Uh, several uh, several minutes later, it, it it didn't record anything, but if you zoom ahead or, like, fast forward ahead, it's gone. So I know there's, like, a 10-minute gap that the, that the ring totally missed somebody in my yard. In my, It's right. It's up near the house. It's not, like, out by the street. So somebody came prancing in my – well, I don't know if they pranced. Maybe they galloped. But into my yard and took this – and the ring – didn't even catch anything. It was like sleeping on the job. I have a beef with this exact thing with security cameras. Yeah. I've tried another version called an Arlo, and if you do the free version, you just get clips. Is yeah. that what Ring does? You only get clips? You don't get 24-hour continuous recording? You're supposed to. You're supposed I, to get 24-hour continuous recording for seven-day memory, and then there, it's not there? That's what I thought. I mean, it, well, my, hi, well, is Mickey back from Mickey last week? Mickey snipped the wires oh, on hello, your freaking camera? Again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what happened. It just had, it's there and it's gone. It's there and it's gone. This was an inside job. It was an inside job for sure. I know. And it's my sign. And like I said, I, I, I would have 
just nicely gone out to the burglar and said, hey, you don't have to steal that little man or little woman. I have plenty, and I would have given him one. My Arlo camera, the that was a premium. Movie. Ben Affleck was in it. You think Ben Affleck's still That's Argo. Him? Argo. Same thing, kind of just different. A little bit different. But the Arlo camera that I have, I pay for the premium version, mm-hmm. and it's $15 a month. And usually when you have a security camera, a dash cam, nothing bad happens. Yeah. So you're like, all right, I'm paying $15 for a little bit of emotional security. Sure. Because I haven't caught anything on camera for the 10 years that I've had this thing. Yeah. Well, it turns out I was paying $15 a month for the past two months, and the thing wasn't plugged in. <laughs> Somehow it got unplugged. <laughs> And I heard, I do this thing where I have bad vision. It's a bit I've been doing for the past 30 years. Yeah, sure. And so when I hear a crazy noise outside, I'll pull up my cell phone and I'll look through the security camera on what's going on so it's not blurry. If I were to just pull back the curtain and look out, I wouldn't be able to see. Plus, there could be a murderer pointing a gun. So I pull up my phone to look at the live view to see what that crazy noise was. And it said, your camera's been offline for 51 days. Oh, wow. Don't you hate that? That's two $15 billing periods that were for nothing. Yeah. Well, And and meanwhile, all your stuff is gone. Your stuff is gone. I know. So this is a reminder. Every time you get that email that says you've been billed another whatever, $15 a month for security camera if you pay, just go and (laughs) check and see if it's still plugged in. I got a little frisky cat that goes under the bed to visit his second family. Like every so often when, you know, we pull out the vacuum, he crawls right under the bed. And I think his puffy little tail knocks something loose, and well, I blame the know, cat. Yeah. Or he's it's the a, one that stole the, the sign. It's always the cat's fault. You know, Even if you have, like, a pot roast or something missing, it's usually the cat's fault. You know, we have, like, indoor cameras. It's called, like, like these wee things or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're called. So they, they record everything, and I got the idea, you know, and, and they record it, but you don't know where this cloud is being stored. So I, I got this harebrained idea uh, that I thought, well, maybe this, these are Chinese cameras, okay? And oh, maybe sure. the Chinese are, like, monitoring everything I do. So you know what I do now? When I go past one of these cameras in my home, I drop my pants and I moon the camera, even when people are over. It seems like you should be receiving shipments of Timu toilet paper. Like if it's going straight to China, they're like, here you go. We see you've got a little cleanup in it's, aisle three. In aisle three. You know, you couldn't find toilet paper for a while. It's finally back. We went to Sam's because they had that big dock strike controversy or whatever it was. And everybody ran to Sam's and took all the toilet paper. And I thought, what is it? You don't get toilet paper from overseas. What do you think? You have like, you know, French toilet paper? Oh, this is from Paris. Oh, it's my Paris toilet paper. No, it's made. it's not made it overseas like in Europe. They stole all the toilet paper. It was all gone for like weeks. And my wife, she was very upset about this. She goes, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We got to go whack off. Yeah. What I do is I, do, what did you say? I whack off some tree whack limbs. Off some, no, with what? Oh, and God. then I go and I make a little slush out of their bark and then create toilet paper the old-fashioned way, the yeah. way they used to, with papyrus. Well, that's very that's very. Get a uh, splinter smart. in your keister. Well, Menards, though, they have. Your what? Menards. What's wrong with your Nards? <laughs> Menards. Menards had, had uh, like tube socks on sale for a whole pack for six bucks and i figure hey these are this is our toilet paper they're washable she said "Ew, that's gross i go hey (laughs) that's why i was kicked out of the boy scouts but not before i learned a few of these little tips usually i'd say any port in a storm but the dock strikers dock strikers all the ports were closed ports closed Mm. yeah no fun at the port today they got that figured out until election day yeah, past January, then they're going to strike again, but all smoothed over conveniently. Yeah, and they kind of do what they tell you, like, oh, this is when we're going to do it. Like, well, you know, now I have time to go to Sam's. So, I mean, get like 3,000 pallets of toilet paper. What did I tell you about my finger that I slammed in the door before coming here today? I thought you slammed it here, and I thought, oh, that's bad juju for the radio station. Yeah. Ghosts are attacking you. But you said this happened at your home where signs are disappearing. So I think you've got ghosts. Tis the season. I, I think that's what it is, and I slammed it. I slammed it. Like, my car door that I just spent a bunch of money to get fixed. You think it would have been a little bit more, you know, nice and sympathetic? I mean, no. I mean, in the in, in, look, can you see the blood on my finger? Everybody can see it. Fingernails on the hanging off. It's basically it's yeah. It was like you know what that you know how and that hurt and you can't really you can cuss you can say things. Well, I'm not going to do it now because everybody's worried I'll do this on the air anyway. But 
I, you're all by yourself. And, and what good does it do to scream bad cuss words when you're by yourself? But it really hurt. And no one has sympathy for that, too. No. But it makes me doubt my own senility when I do stuff like that. You know, I brush my teeth and I put the toothpaste tube in the refrigerator. I'm like, what the heck just happened here? Yeah. Like, how do you slam your finger in a car door when you're almost 40 years old? Well, I'll tell, yeah, well, I'll tell you how I did it. You want to know how I did it? Mm. I'm trying. I have my notes, okay, which is basically a piece of paper that has like one phone phone number of one of our guests so I get get the phone number right. And you start every note with fix the printer. Right. You write that in, in ink. <laughs> I did. And then you put the, the guests on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. And so I have this piece of paper and I'm trying to get in the car and, and I slam my finger. I lose the piece of paper. As you see, I don't even have this. Our first guest, I had to look up his phone number because by that piece of paper is somewhere in my garage and uh, my finger is bleeding all over the place. And I came to the station and guess what ironically happened? There's a there's a band aid, not that I could use for my finger because it was on Vic Porcelli's picture because he thought his nipples were showing. Have you ever heard such insanity? If you if you, would you okay, say somebody they don't have our picture out there because I guess they think we're too good looking. Oh, we ran out of frames from the dollar store. Right. There's really yeah. no way to add more wah, pictures wah. to the wall. Yeah, I just think it's because we're too good looking. But I, apparently, the, there's a big hadoo to do out here because Vic is upset with his picture because his nipples are showing. So they took the one band aid that they could have could have like stopped the my bleeding like a tourniquet and instead put it on his. Picture to hide his nipples. What type of? Well, I hope nobody here is like working for an urgent care center because there's going to be a lot of really you know people can tell. Yeah, there, there are a lot of self centered people that aren't going to be able to help people that have real problems. Yeah, he has body shame issues, and instead of doing something about it, he just is that kid at the pool who's wearing a t shirt still. Yeah, right. And in, in, in the water, in the water. Did you have you, you know? Did you ever make fun of those kids? I did. Yeah, I know. Because it's did. so like, why would you wear a sweatshirt in the pool? It's just going to get filled with water like a sponge and weigh you down. And they sink and they go right to the bottom of the of the pool. Those people do. Now this isn't funny at all, but this just I, happened to some Navy SEAL guys. What they were about to take over some missiles that were being shipped to Iran. Yeah. And they jumped into the water wearing 90 pounds of weights. Oh, And yeah. they just went straight to the bottom of the ocean and died. Right. Well, that, yeah, that, that'll That's happen. That's kind of like what would happen if Vic Porcelli was a Navy SEAL. Just well, I, bloop right in the water I, and he's gone. I, bloop. And there he goes. Yeah, bloop, 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 bloop. And, there's, and then what would happen? I, I have no idea. I CL tell you what, team I tell 600 you, pounds is what he would be on. <laughs> team. Uh, well, here's what I said. Bin, Bin Laden just got away. I couldn't catch up to him. Yeah. I am out of breath. <laughs> Well, I said, you know, you know, in when we run marathons, like I used to back in the day, I mean, you put the Band-Aids on your nipples for real because that way when you start bleeding because of the chafing, it's called Bloody 11. So I thought maybe he secretly wanted to go run a marathon with me. And so I asked him, hey, you want to go for a run sometime? And you know what Michelle did? Mm. She pretended like she was Kamala Harris. She went, ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that's what happened right there. That's a wicked witch type laugh if I ever heard it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, Mickey Mouse. He's yeah. back. Oh, hello there. They're keeping me under the counter. <laughs> sorry, I want to play soccer, Mister Mouse. No, yeah, okay. So it all comes. Yeah, okay. Anyway, I got the phone number. I got everything to go. So we're we're going to have a fun show. You know why? Guess, ask me why. Ask why me. are we going to have a fun show? Well, I'm going to have a fun show because along with this guy whose phone number, uh, he's an author. Okay, we'll talk about him in a bit. We've got coming in here. The keeper, the very keeper of the mullet. You know how what a big deal this is, mm -hmm. because she brought the mullets back to you know people over forty years old all over the world, and, and she's going to be with us today in person to tell her what you know what it's like to uh, you know work on my mullet. Todd's personal hairstylist is going to be in studio, and she backed <laughs> out before for some she reason. Did. She was a little under the weather, and she knows that we ask terribly uh, personal questions. Very deeply. Like yeah. my hairdressers, when they're ladies, they usually rest their their boobies on the back of my neck, and that's we're, kind of why I still go to the hairdresser in the first place. We're going to ask her, too. We're like, do they do that on purpose to get a bigger tip, or is that just part of the job because you're so close quarters with <laughs> – the patient, well, if you I, I, I typically say, hey, look, those are in my eyes. I can't see. Yes. <laughs> I just said, well, turn around, for gosh sakes. Something I've had happen to me is I went to a hairdresser at one of these sports places where yeah. they've got all the TVs on, 
And this particular place, it had just gone to crud. I guess I had a coupon, and I was ready for a little bit of torture. Sports clips. So I, hey, I'm not going to say who it was, <laughs> but I went in, and the TVs were on infomercials. Yeah. So strike one right there. Yeah. The lady cutting my hair wasn't one of those, no offense, booty short ladies that you usually expect at these places. Right, right. Usually they have a Hooters-type theme with Hooters. their ensembles. Yeah. This was just kind of an ogre that was cutting and, hair that day. Oh, oh, and she was a smoker, very heavy smoker. Oh, I've got a smoke. i got a Nothing hole in my better throat. than when you have someone's fingers just right there next to your <laughs> nose. They are a smoker. And she had this amazing technique where she would use a comb yeah. to get my hair straight, and then it would flip right back into my face and just slap me. <laughs> Right in the friggin' eyeball. The hair or the, the, the hooters that the, she didn't have? The comb would slap oh. me in the face every time she'd brush up once, yeah. cut, and then slap right in the face. And then she uh, cut my ear off almost. <laughs> there was oh. blood coming down from my ear. Like my finger. And then she, the credit card machine was down that day, too. So I had to run to my car to get a checkbook. This was a few years ago, so sure, I still had checks yeah. in the car. Yeah. And I thought, why am I going to go back inside? Did uh, you? I did. For some reason, why? I went back inside. I went to get my checkbook because I don't run out on a bill, but I care into that place up. I wrote a dirty email to this sports-themed haircutting place, <laughs> and they sent me a coupon for one free haircut. And so I was you like, can do it all over so again. So you can do it all over again. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll give it one more chance. Did you go back to the same one? Not- hey, you're the one that like said, I had to wear my smoke out <laughs> the hole in my throat. Mike Wazowski, your papers are late. Yeah, mm, I did not go back to the same place. I went to a different place. Well, like, here's the thing about places like that. When you have televisions all over, I don't want a you know, person cutting my hair to be watching television mm-hmm. while they're cutting my hair. And that's probably why they cut your ear off, which, by the way, you can't really tell anymore. Because now that when you, whenever you put those headphones on, like we're wearing right mm-hmm. now, you can't tell. I mean, you take them off and, like, damn, look what happens. It inspired here. me to get on the radio for that exact reason. Well, that seemed to work really well for you. Well, that's going to be fun. Well, maybe maybe Sarah, who's also a therapist, because hair, hair stylists are a therapist, so to speak, I mean, maybe she'll tell you what's wrong with you, and then also she'll cut your hair while we're in studio. I like that. This is one extra thing that I've found out about places. When you get a free comp item like a Comp, free haircut yeah, right. and you go to a different place yeah. they get mad about that they're like we didn't mess up your hair oh, why are you coming here i know and i'm like well i'm not going back to the other place why would i go there again yeah they're like oh we're losing money by even accepting this coupon like ah, that's not really my business so wait you take coupons from other places to the place you're going to the sport cutting place yeah they sent me a coupon from corporate for yeah. one free haircut oh, nice. because of the mistake. Yeah. And then I went to a totally different location to use it, and oh. they were annoyed. They're like, no, you're supposed to go back to the place that botched your face. Right, right, right. And like, yeah. no, I'm never going back there. When is Joey coming back? I need my smokes. I got to get the other ear. Yeah. I'm starting a Cut collection. Him off. Yeah, I mean, he looks like that, that artist. Who is the artist that had his ear cut off? That's Joey. Uh, Vincent Van Frankenstein. Yes. Victor. Like Victor Van Gogh. Well, That's his yeah, name. Victor. Victor. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a great time. Mitch is going to do a big haircutting number for us. That's going to be special. Admiral Andy, who is now AWOL Andy, will again not be with us. But in the meantime, we're going to have a great time. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. In the meantime, I'm Todd Showalter, along with my bestest buddy, Joey B. This is The Right Mind Show. We'll be right back. Coming up next on The Right Mind Show with Todd Showalter, author Richard Amida on his book, Who's in Charge of My Mind? Are you like me and you like great books? Well, I found a place that has a lot of great books. A traditional publisher right up in Macon County, Deep Read Press. DeepReadPress.com, that's the website to find out exactly what they have. And again, they got traditional books. They are a traditional publisher. Deep Read Press does a lot of things that I particularly like, and most of them has to do with great books. So if you're looking for a publisher to publish, or if you're just looking for a place to find a lot of great books, it's Deep Read Press at DeepReadPress.com. Welcome back to The Right Mind Show with Todd Showalter on News Talk STL. And now a man who never went to HVAC school but knows everything there is to know about hair conditioners, Todd Showalter. And we're back. I'm Todd Showalter along with my buddy Joey V. And on the line now is Richard Amato. He is the author of Who's in Charge of My Mind along with some other books that he's written. But I want to know about my mind. How are you, Richard? Thanks for joining us today. I'm doing very well. Thank you. You sound good. Well, well, hey, you know, I feel good, you know, because I'm trying to figure out who's in charge of my mind, and I think you're going to help me do it. So uh, what? tell us about this book, and uh, tell us about yourself, and uh, tell us what, why we all have to find out about our minds. Well, because uh, before I knew about my mind, my mind was running my life, 
in my life was being run by my past. And my past wasn't so good. What was your past? First of all, I, I was raped when I was five years old and eight years old. My father was a, a oral surgeon, and he left at the age of uh, eight and a half. Thirteen is when I began to understand about what took place at five and eight. When I was 37, 38, I was listening to Ram Dass, which if you're not familiar with who he is, is a person that studied Eastern philosophy. Mm -hmm. And he said something that, that was huge for me. What was that? He was saying that in Eastern philosophy, it's been stated that the thinking mind is a wonderful servant or a horrible master. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I was working across my apartment and it stopped me on my tracks. And the reason that it did that because it was the first time that I that I came to know. And uh, actually what I said at that moment was this. You mean to tell me that my mind is supposed to be working for me? Mm -hmm. And I, and I got two heads and both of them are messing me up. And that's how I began to learn that my mind was supposed to be working for me. The first thing that I needed to do was to realize that my mind had become so negative. So at that moment, I became open to new ideas. And I began to look around for people that seem to be able to live a good life. Uh, what is the best way that people can get a hold of your book? We're just about out of time. Uh, again, the name of your book is Who's in Charge of My Mind? And I, it's like a spiritual journey of your life, I take it. Uh, how can people get a hold of it? It is an Amazon. Okay. And what it is is, is the story about how I developed myself and how I arrived to being mostly a peaceful, mm -hmm. serene, and joyful man. Gotcha. Okay, well... We'll uh, definitely get that out there for you. It's uh, Who's in Charge of My Mind, Richard Amueto, if I said that correctly. If I didn't, I apologize. But I want to thank you for joining. It's good. What's that? It's <laughs> good. Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, I wish you a lot of luck with the book. Take care now. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, Joey, I tell you what, I mean, uh, who's in charge of your mind? I, I was kind of hoping to get some more insight into our minds. I don't know uh, if I did. Did you? That's the secret to these self-help books is that yeah. they don't give you the answers for free. No, you got to buy them and then you find out, oh, uh, I should have just been a better person and yeah. gone on more runs. Well, I go on more runs. And it's usually like, like uh, you, you ever get that? I mean, seriously, it's always like the silly little things, too. Mm -hmm. It's like you get this book, and do you get self-help books? I don't because I think, you know, I think like people like you and I, we don't need any help, do we? No. No. I, think, I mean, the one way that I feel my whole life is uh, just perfectly uh, in, in equilibrium, you yeah. know, perfect stasis, is that I have a woman that keeps me in check. Yeah, I have right, a perfect right. lady that I love, and she just keeps me on the straight and narrow. Physically, though, too, because my, my, I, I do, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and sometimes I have to be physically restrained from doing things. And if it weren't for my wife, who I'm not supposed to bring up at the show, who I've really been good about not doing this so far, mm -hmm. she physically restrains me. And that's why, uh, I mean, sometimes I'll be wanting to do something. Like, for example, like we'll go out to breakfast, right? And uh, she'll say, hey, why don't we order pancakes? And I'll say, let's not order them. The guy over there has them. Let's go get his. And she'll have to physically restrain me from doing something that's probably going to land us you know, in jail or get kicked out of the restaurant. Are those the types of things you're talking about? Yeah, if you put on an apron, you can go up to any table and say, are you finished with that? Oh, and if yeah. they say uh, no or yes, <laughs> you just know. grab the plate and then sit down one table over and start eating. We ought to do that. Can I we know. Do, let's cut the show. We can't cut the show short because we got Sarah, the keeper of the mullet, coming in. But afterwards, let's go get pancakes. Cakes. Let's not order them. Let's just go eat everybody else's with an apron on. What happens when you have people on who talk about self-help stuff is yeah. you want to get the secret. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, just right there in the interview, you want to have the secret. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're not going to sell you a book or anything. We're just going to say, 
Be better to yourself. Be good yeah, to yourself. Be good to yourself. People always want to know the secret to weight loss or having a better life. And right. it's just like, go on a run, eat less, and right. then people will be attracted to you. You'll find someone you love, and then they'll make sure that you don't steal someone else's pancakes when you go to the diner. I think that's... And that, that's the secret to life. You should just get... I, I, hope this is, I hope that we can transcribe that, because that's your book right there, my friend. Hey, I tell you what. You write it, like, maybe in a couple minutes after the show's over. I'll have you back on next week, and then we can have your self-help book. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll be cagey about the answers and then say, uh, buy my book on Amazon. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, I can't wait. Next week, my guest is my best buddy, Joey. We'll well, go half and half on the profits. Oh, you don't have to do that. Just give me some pancakes. Oh, okay? of course. Yeah, there you go. Well, when we come back, we got the uh, keeper of the mullet. Oh, Sarah, I tell you, she's, uh, I've known her a long time. She's, she's kept my mind in check and my head in check. Hair, that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we're going to find out what she has to say. In the meantime, I'm Todd Showalter, along with my bestest buddy, Joey B. This is The Right Mind Show. We'll be right back. Coming up next on The Right Mind Show with Todd Showalter, Todd's real life hairstylist, Sarah Lynn Hoffman. Welcome back to The Right Mind Show with Todd Showalter on News Talk STL. And now a man who refers to his butt as a split end, Todd Showalter. Now we're back. I'm Todd Showalter along with my buddy Joey V. And sitting next to me now, I can't believe it, Joey. I mean, this is such a magical day. I mean, how often? I mean, I, I keep... How many times have I said it? You keep every time I walk in here, you say, "Wow, your mullet looks wonderful," and I always say, "Well, it's because the keeper of the mullet, my best friend Sarah." did it and she's got to come in on the show sometime and it's been hard to get you in but now enough said sitting next to me is the one the only sarah hoffman the keeper of the mullet how are you i am good i'm so excited that you're here I i'm mean, excited to be here yeah because you know basically whenever you know i come in for this monthly uh treatment so to speak you say <laughs> it's like you, a flea and tick shampoo it, it is well sometimes she does that sometimes don't you i mean sometimes you know, there's lice yeah that's mm. how i got i got neutered that way i didn't know that sarah did that but she did she took care of the whole nine yards but i mean you say like our little our little sessions are they're like a podcast and so I've said, you should have your own podcast. And so you started listening to podcast and you said, I, you accidentally heard this one and you said, <laughs> you may have your own podcast. So I, what a better opportunity for you to like launch your podcast than right here. I agree. Yeah, it, what, Cause you were talking about uh, relationships and stuff like that, that you'd want to talk about. You see, Joey and I, we don't do too much of that because you know, I'm the perfect husband and he's the perfect boyfriend. Uh, but you want to talk about on your show relationships. And you were mentioning last week that you found recently that you can't find somebody that you can emotionally attach to. Is that correct? Correct. What, what does that exactly mean? Because Joey and I would never have that problem. Um, so I'm 40. Okay. Dating in your 40s. Yeah. Okay. Kind of crazy. And what what's it like? I mean, what happens? 40-year-old men that are single. I just feel like I keep running into these men that are like unemotionally available. Right. And what do you mean by unemotionally? I mean, because um, sensitive? No. It just means they can't be vulnerable. Okay. Like cry? They, like, keep the wall up. Keep the wall up. As okay. soon as things get like more serious and the closer you get to them, the more they start to pull away. Could it be that you have like sharp objects, like scissors and things like that? I mean, could they be worried that I maybe you could attack them? I have been told that I'm intimidating. Really? Why? I mean, intimidating in like in a uh, like what? Because of the sharp objects? Well, I on my dating profile, I do have a picture of me holding a pair of scissors, and I was told mm -hmm. that that was intimidating. Well, is there blood involved? I mean, because I don't. I've seen some of your pictures, and <laughs> even though you're holding sharp objects, I've never seen any blood. No, no blood. Uh, okay, well, what would you look for, like, in the perfect man? It's, okay, right here, because, you know, I don't know how many, most of the people listening to the show, they're, they're kind of elderly, I think. No, I'm kidding. But I, are they? I well, the Matlock listeners, they're, they're in Matlock, their upper yeah, to mid-50s. We don't know how old they are, Sarah. But, like, if you could find the perfect, perfect specimen of a male, what would that be? Oh, my gosh. Sure, okay. Um, Tall. Tall, okay. <laughs> um, emotionally available. Okay, okay trustworthy right so kind of like a dog yes. a boy scout almost a boy, a boy scout who's a dog okay Do you remember the scout the scout motto was basically all of those things uh, uh, courteous I, kind trustworthy brave and pure mind and heart right know how to cook on a camp stove have you thought sure. of maybe dating a boy scout they're a little young i mean that could get you yeah. in trouble 
that might be illegal. Right. Yeah, that, that's, it wouldn't probably be. The fact that we were actually promoting that on the show probably wouldn't go over too well. Oh, one it? of the ones was thrifty, and I don't think women like that. They no. like a man that spends all the paycheck oh, on them. yes, that's right. Now, would you, like, really be, you know, excited about a guy that went to the dollar store all the time? Mm. I don't know if it's a deal breaker. Yeah. Well, see, dollar stores, they have some really good deals, though, as far as deals go. Is this interview going well so far? I mean, because you look like this is. So- <laughs> we should get back to the dating app. Back like, to the dating what part. What is the best yeah. app to be on? What, are you on dating um, apps, Sarah? Well, I just randomly re-downloaded Hinge the other day after Hinge? a few beverages when I was out with my friends. Okay. They convinced me. What is Hinge? It's a dating website or a dating app. Okay. Is the trick um, that the lady makes the first message? Is that what it hinges? No. Or no? Okay. No. Well, that's Bumble. That is that's Bumble. Bumble. I've never mm-hmm. done that. I feel like on Bumble you might run into like more beta Alpha? males. Beta mm-hmm. males. Because that's males. the one where the women, the women have to message the man first. Is this like dominatrix? I'm looking type for more stuff? of an alpha male. So like alpha. I've never tried Bumble. We were talking before you came on about how you basically, for usually people over 50 years old, but you have like revolutionized, you brought the mullet back to America. What, what was it that, uh, that, you know, inspired you to do this? Because I was one of your first, you know, people and you, I, I, was this a passion that you had before you met me? Absolutely, I've always loved a mullet. I, I, you, you, you're like you're like the you're like the Michelangelo of mullet. So like, yes. what? I mean, seriously. I mean, did you just look around and you say, "No, nah, that hairstyle's not good. That's not. That's not." The mullet, and so was it. What 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 was it that made you decide to bring? It, I get. I am so happy with mine. Okay, so I. I mean, people here on the radio. I mean, they can see it. No, they can't. But I mean, uh, I mean, what was it that inspired you? And what are some of the techniques? What goes into crafting the perfect mullet? I mean, really, you inspired me to like. I inspired yes. you. No. Todd America. Todd, Todd America oh. is the one that really. Todd inspired America. Me. I get confused by it. a lot yes. of people. Think I am Todd America. I mean, it takes a certain person that can pull off a mullet. Really? Okay. Yes. It, it, so it, it just Todd, America, and I were the only two? Yes. Well, my son had, both of my sons have had mullets. That's right. That, that, do, do, were they inspired? By Todd America. Get out of here. Yeah. We ought to have Todd America on the show sometime, <laughs> Joey. Joey, have you ever had a mullet? I did when I was a little baby, and I think it's just because it's easier for my mom to just not cut your hair for a while, right? Isn't that part of the technique is just leaving it long in the back? Uh, or is there more? There may, maybe there's more to it. I, I know. You have to ask her. She's like the, 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 the master of the mullet. Mm-hmm. Is there, what, is, what, is, what goes into it? Just a lot of heart. Okay, I a mean, lot of heart. You know, well, you can feel the that. business in the front, party in the back. Like you rinse. just can't go wrong. No, I think you're right. I definitely agree. Now we talk a few times about some of the crazy people that you get to come in to see you, and I don't want you to like name out names unless you want to. I mean, that can be <laughs> fun. But you, you had to have. I've always said is going to uh, someone like yourself is kind of like going to your therapist, isn't it? Because yes. you just open up and you tell stuff. I mean, sometimes you tell you you tell me, don't you? Say, Todd, shut up. I don't want to hear any more of this. But I mean, have you heard some really crazy stuff? I've definitely heard it all. Yeah. (laughs) There is something, though, that I like to call, like, the hairstylist client confidentiality. I have to be very discreet. Can we just break that today? Yeah. I just won't name names. Okay. All right. Yes. Do tell. What are some good ones? Um, I mean, I get to hear about people who are cheating on their spouses. Really? I mean, I hear it all. One of the wildest stories I probably ever heard heard which i think i might have told you this before Uh this was like within the first year of me doing hair and i had this woman come in and she told me that she was abducted by aliens the night before really Mm -hmm. and she woke up with a lasagna noodle inside of her oh Oh. (laughs) do you remember this i believe i think i do i think Uh i yes now she woke up now she's in what you're cutting her hair. Yes. And she tells you she was abducted by aliens and woke up yes. with a lasagna noodle inside, inside of her. In, oh, 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 how did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. My first thought was like, was it cooked noodle no, no, or oh. uncooked noodle? <laughs> Joey, what do you think of this? You look like you're just like, you're, you're trying to like visualize this, aren't you? She definitely didn't know ahead of time she was going to be abducted or she would have gotten her hair done before right. to look nice for the aliens. So well, now she's thinking, well, next time they come, maybe they'll be more polite, use a less wide noodle, I hope. Oh, I, maybe, maybe like a macaroni like a, a penne, next time. Or yeah. maybe like an angel hair or something like that. But a, a, a lasagna noodle. Yes. <laughs> now I know what you you're probably thinking. She's not going to tip me. She's crazy. Is that what you were thinking? I mean, she obviously had some... 
some mental, mental issues. Illness, illness going on, yes. So how did you, I mean, what did you do? Why, did you just do your job and like yeah. tell her to push her I out? I tried to cut her hair as fast as I could. I bet. Did Get you, her out of there. Did, uh, did the noodle fall out while she was with you? No, no. I think she said it was still inside of her. Still inside. Wow. Yeah, wow. That is insane. Yes. I don't think we've ever had a guest on the show who knows somebody that had a lasagna noodle in them. Have you ever had a lasagna? I've, like if I've eaten lasagna, then the noodle's in my stomach. But I'm assuming this wasn't in her stomach. Oh, no. No, no. It's, it was no. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Can you believe this, Joey? I can't believe I, I can't. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat lasagna anymore. When you do your hair cutting, is it set up where it's very... Uh, calm and relaxing, and you have candles, and then you give someone a glass of wine to loosen them up, and then they start talking. Oh, by the way, this yes. is the part where Joey changes the subject because <laughs> <laughs> it's uncomfortable. <laughs> um, yes, I do serve wine, so that could be part of it. Yeah, get them a little drunk, and they'll tell you anything. Oh, yeah, is that they what really is? start to open up. Their head starts to bob yes. and weave, and then up oh, you lose an ear. Well, I, I don't drink, so you always have those little those, those little like juice packets yes. for me, which I really appreciate. Yes. And the cookies, and you tell me to be quiet while you're cutting mm -hmm. my hair, and I appreciate that. But you you wield though a lot of power. I've said that before because the people that cut your hair, I mean, you can mess them up for like a whole month, if not longer. Have you ever had somebody you thought this person's really like a bitch here? I'm just gonna like shave her down like about two inches more than she wanted. Have you ever just gone after somebody mm -hmm. like that? It's crossed my mind before. I've never done it, though. Really? I've yeah. never acted on it, but it's definitely crossed my mind. Okay, okay. Now, you were telling me about the witches, too. Can you want to, because you are also, <laughs> uh, she, she's out also, not only is she the keeper of the mullet, and she's the master of the mullet, she's a therapist and all that other good stuff, but she also is a witch hairstylist, because you went to a witch convention, wasn't it? And you cut the witch's yes. hair? it was a witch's, they were doing this big witch gathering and a photo shoot and they needed their hair done for the photo shoots okay but what? there were all witches from all over right that all gathered okay what, what like like witches on brooms or like what some of them really okay yes. right okay they all considered themselves witches 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 okay well that, that, that's wild yeah they would, I, I i have you ever met a witch oh I mean, it is halloween mm -hmm. no i'm imagining they all come out just like in wizard of oz with just hay bales stuck in their hay hair. yeah you just got to Put a little bit of hay bale in there right. after the tornado brings the witches out. Okay, back to the subject at hand, though, this whole dating thing. So you're trying still, mm -hmm. uh, the you know, relationships, I'm because now I'm stewing this in my head. Can you see the stewing going on? It's stewing in my head. It's somebody that can't, be, you want somebody that can be emotionally attached, okay? Now, when you say- Available. Emotionally, uh, avail emotionally available. She wants a guy yes. that listens. Yes, uh, what? What did you? So you want some? Is that what it is? You want somebody who just listens? Because you can. There are people in the in comas and hospitals. I mean, you could just like date somebody like that. They'll listen all day. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever dated somebody that was like in a coma? No, I can't say that I have. All right. Well, who was the worst person that you've ever dated? Oh gosh, I mean that's a long list. <laughs> really? Yes. Did you cut their hair? Uh yeah, I pretty much cut it every. Cut everyone that I've been in relationships with hair. Oh, really? Yeah. Even if they didn't want you to? Like, everyone did you ever wants me to. But I mean, yeah, but let's say, like, uh, I'm thinking of growing a mullet. Do you, have you ever said, like, no, I think I'm going to shave your head? No. No, you don't do that. No. Okay. The witches probably have people, you know, come in with uh, clumps of hair already for their voodoo doll. Voodoo doll. And they voodoo come doll. in, like, you got any yeah. extra hair on the ground that we can take <laughs> from you? Exactly. Yeah. Well, like, we could do that. And that's the other thing I thought about. I don't know if you've thought about this, but, you know, I always. If you, you really, not only could you really mess somebody up, say you were really you could mad. frame someone. You could. For murder. Yeah, that's what you could do. You could take somebody you didn't like. You could take <laughs> their hair, okay, and just spread it around the crime scene. And they could say, well, if we do a DNA what test on this, it looks like Bob from Hardware was at the murder <laughs> scene. Now, they don't know that you just cut Bob's hair because, and but you're mad at him because he's not emotionally available. So you frame Bob at the murder scene. This may be, this. you know what? That's that what has you crossed my mind before. I'm well, not going to lie. That's a great dating tip. You say, look, either you go out with me and be emotionally available or you're going to be doing 20 to 30 in the pen. <laughs> you know, right? right. Well, have, have you, that, that's really crossed your mind, it has it? That's crossed my mind. But you haven't actually I've done it. I've always wondered, like, how much DNA I go home with I, every oh, night. Well, yeah, that's that, uh, that's kind of yeah, that's kind of hot, isn't it? Yeah, it's no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't really do that, though. There's, no. I'm not going to like find myself like you know answer no. to a, a DA someday, like saying, "Well, we found your we found your hair somewhere." You, you wouldn't do that. No. 
Okay. Well, going back to your podcast. Not to you, at least. Not to me. Okay. Well, or Todd America, who I get mistaken for all the time. Now, your podcast, you, you talked about you were listening to podcasts, you want to start a podcast. What would the name of your podcast be? Maybe like hair talk. Hair talk. Not to start recording all of my haircuts, like with clients. That could be fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, that would be. Oh, Joey, do you think that's a great idea? I think HBO had a hit with Taxi Cab Confessions, where people were yes. in the back seat yeah. and doing hanky panky and admitting to murders and having magic tricks. And I think that same thing could work with any barber shop or cosmetology school. Yeah. This cosmetology yeah. school. Hairstylist yeah. Confessions. I like that. I it, like it. So you think, I mean, is this something that maybe, would would they be like, would you black out their faces on radio so that yes. you can tell who they were? <laughs> yes. Or like on the mic? Okay. Or would it be like, you know how they talk like it, that? It would be like a case-to-case basis. Yeah. Okay. If they sign the release or not. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So what, what now you have, you have your own, tell, tell us about your place because the people want to come in and now, <laughs> anybody that wants to come in and get their hair done though, you got to make sure that they, you don't bump my, my appointments or anything like that. Right. Okay. But what, now, what's the name of your place? Tell it. I mean, um, it's called STL hair. Right. I'm in Baldwin, uh-huh. Missouri. Right. Um, uh, I do everything, but I pretty much specialize in like extensions and color. Right. Yeah. So you, you're great. So if you can't. And mullets, yeah, obviously. Mullet, and mullets, exactly. And mullet. So if somebody doesn't have like a mullet, but you could actually do the extension to give them a mullet. Absolutely. Right. I think we talked about doing that for you for like Fourth of July. We were going to yeah. do like red, white, and blue. No, you said you were we actually did that. We were supposed to. You I said know. you were going to dye my hair and do that yeah. because one year I remember the uh, Joey do Christmas. Wait, Christmas, you put the balls in my hair. Uh, you put ornaments. Now you yes. can put balls in my hair. Ornaments. You put, yeah, yeah. Are we going to do that again this year? Yes, absolutely. We right. decorated the mullet for Christmas, and it was the. Holiday edition. It was, Holiday mullet edition. I looked like a Christmas tree, Joey. It really did. I didn't have like a lasagna noodle in me, but I did have, <laughs> I did look like a Christmas tree. It was really quite festive. It was. I, I'm not trying to make this all about me, but do you tell people that, you know, oh, by the way, you know, I, I do cut Todd America's hair? Um, I'm not going to lie. I've had to warn a couple of my clients who were like, Really? Ahead of your appointment. Right. I'll see you like sitting out in the hallway waiting for your appointment. I'm like, I just got to give you a warning. Like there's a guy out there. (laughs) If he talks to you, if he jokes with you, he does, you know. Just moonwalk out of the room is what I tell people. He's special. I basically tell them don't take anything he says like, don't take it personally. Don't take it. (laughs) He does stand up comedy. Like. Well, and I sometimes they walk out and I go, oh my gosh, what happened to you? (laughs) Yes. That's never going. So to, ahead of time, I'm like, well. I give them a little warning. Like that's you do give them a warning, do you? That's good to know because now that I know that they're warned, I'll really give them some good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. What do you have when it comes to small business uh, struggles? Is there anything that you're really worried about with the economy or your prices oh, going up gosh, or getting yes. supplies and the it supply is. chain issues? Yeah, it's a little rough right now. It's everyone's cutting back. Oh, so, I get it. Cutting back. Is that, <laughs> no that, pun intended. See, that was punny. Oh, um, okay. I, it, ever, it can be felt in small businesses where people are cutting corners to try and save money these days. So I have a really good, solid clientele, but you can tell people are kind of trying to space their appointments out a little bit. Oh, no. Just really? to save money, just because the economy is rough right now. And, I never I mean, do. that's where – that's the first thing women do is like – that's where they can cut corners is, oh, we're going to push my hair appointment back a little bit, save money. Right, right. Why? Here's what I don't understand about cutting. Why? Okay, because my hair is probably, I shouldn't be saying this, but I mean, how come guys' hair is cheaper than women's hair? Um, It's faster. It's faster? Shorter. Usually it's shorter. Actually, we don't charge really by men and women's anymore. Because there are no genders anymore. Yeah, it's I mean, all short haircut, long haircut, medium haircut. Right, because you can't say there's no man and woman anymore. Do you know that? There's that's, actually some states it's illegal. Like in New York, they've already changed it. And all, all the salons in New York, they're not allowed to legally list it as men and women haircuts. Really? Really. Well, what I mean, what happens so, if you do? I don't. It's just. Are you like I, a band? Are I don't you know because I don't live canceled? in New York. I haven't asked anyone in New York, but. They make you cut hair in the subway. I've, they do. <laughs> send you the underground. Subway. I already changed my price list because it's eventually going to happen everywhere. And really? it makes, I mean, the business sense. side of it, it makes sense because why a man could come in with hair down to here. Why am I charging him less than a woman? Right. Who has yeah. a short haircut. So it really does make sense from like a business standpoint. Well, could to charge on length. A woman, since you haven't changed this and bowed to the masses of wokeness, couldn't a woman come in and just say, 
I identify as a man today. And just you would give her like the, you know, the man's haircut. Well, that's why I already changed mine. Oh, okay. It goes by length because I'm not. I thought you were going to say that's why no. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Okay. I never thought of that. Did you think of that? Of course I thought of that. You that was a everything. leading question. I knew the answer. I'm like an attorney over here with my podcast skills. He was pre-law <laughs> for two days. Wow. I was pre-med for three. Hey, wow. you're in good hands here. Either I cut my finger or he can he can do the uh, whatever they call the workers' comp claim. It's all good. Yeah. So what are the pitfalls? Anything uh, you would tell people that are, you know, uh, running your own business, doing your own thing? That, that sounds to be great. But is there anything that, you know, you wish, yeah, I just wish I didn't have to deal with this? Um, not really. I enjoy all of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, these days as a hairstylist, you're not just a hairstylist. You are, you have to run your own social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have, you have to do your own marketing. Your do you enjoy everything? That? Are you good at your marketing? Or I think so. I like to think so. Sure. Yeah. Where can I follow you? Um, on Instagram, I'm STL Hair by Sarah. Mm-hmm. There STL are, Hair by Sarah. There yeah. are some underscores in there. It's like STL underscore Hair underscore by underscore sure. Sarah. Right. 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 Well, and that's then on okay. Facebook, it's STL Hair by Sarah. Right. Also. Now, are you going to be promoting this? And TikTok. I have TikTok. You're on TikTok. Yes. That's yes. just my full name, though. Sarah Lynn Hoffman. I just am bringing TikTok back. Found you. It's official. So you're actually there. Are you going to be promoting this this guest episode uh, prior to your big podcast launch? I mean, are you going Absolutely. to be promoting this? Yes. Because this is going to be good. This is probably going to you know put you into another you know stratosphere as far as like, you know, fame. I I am th- no doubt. I think so. She's an expert in colorist, so a lot of gray hairs and blue hairs are going to be going in if they uh, hurt her on this show. She doesn't. She doesn't dye my hair. I get that a lot. Oh, you get your hair dyed. You haven't dyed my hair. No, have you? yeah. You just don't. You don't have gray hair. Yeah. See, there you You're go. Doing good. That's why. You know, that's why because you put me at ease until I start thinking about the fact that you may take my hair and put it on a crime scene. <laughs> so next thing, I, next time I come in, it probably will be gray. Right. Well, hey, I've had a good time today. You had a good time? Wonderful time. Good time. Sarah, you've had a good time. You said you had a good time. I Mitch? had a great time. Okay. Well, hey, in the meantime, uh, Mitch is going to take us out with one of his big numbers. We're not sure what it's going to be, but like I always say, you don't have a right mind. You don't have a mind at all. I'm Todd Showalter, along with my bestest buddy, Joey V. This is The Right Mind Show. We'll be back next week, hopefully. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to The Right Mind Show with Todd Showalter. To find out about all things Todd, go to studiotodd.com. We will see you next Saturday night at 5 p.m. right here on 1019-941 Newstalk STL and always streaming online at newstalkstl.com.